Good morning, friends. Good morning, friends. And welcome, welcome to our spiritual, our Sunday morning celebration. Here I am. It's Sunday morning. And very special welcome to those of you joining us online in this, our love stream this morning. It's fully that time of year again, and as we look around, the earth is refreshed from the rains we had yesterday, and the sanctuary is filled with faces of loved ones. Albeit we are keeping our protocols, but it's just good to see you here this morning and to feel the energies that's coming. So I'd like for you to join me as all things begin here at our center with an opening affirmative prayer. Recognizing that there's only one, one presence, one power, one infinite intelligence that governs, guides, and guards. That intelligence is God, and we are one with it. And in this knowing, I speak my word for this Sunday morning celebration, knowing that every person who has allowed themselves to participate in this service is this morning tuned in, tapped in, and turned on. And we know that every word that is preceded out of our speaker this morning, Reverend John, that truly inspires and uplifts and blesses every person who hears this message. So I know that every idea needed for this morning's service and every activity that takes place takes place in and perfect order and I know that each one of us as we sit here and celebrate this season of love and joy and sharing that truly come together as a community one with each other and so I accept these words as true for us, and I simply release this word to law, giving thanks, giving thanks that all this is already so. And so it is. And now this morning, our inspirational reading comes to us from our Science of Mind magazine, and it's from a December issue in a previous year. And it's written by Reverend Ron Fox. He gave those guides for December. And its title is Anticipation. And the epigraph says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Matthew 6, verse 21. 
And from the Science of Mind, page 423, the other epigraph says, to each is given what he needs, and the gifts of heaven come alike to all. How we shall use these gifts is all that matters. Friends, so here is the reading. Do you remember when you were a child, the sense of expectation you felt the day before Christmas? When we would get to open our presents and see what great surprises were in store for us? As adults and students of science of mind, we can see the truth of Holmes' words. In the above quote, the gifts of heaven are available to us every day. They don't come just once a year, and they come to all of us, not just a special chosen few. Isn't that an even more marvelous gift? Anything you and I could ever hope for is ours right now, just for the asking. We also get to choose how to use the gifts of spirit. In fact, we can choose not to use them. Perhaps the greatest gift of all is free choice. We can create the life we wish to have by simply saying yes to the one who created all that is. There is nothing to assemble, no warranties to fill out, no ribbons to untie, and no warranties to return. There is also recognizing our oneness with spirit and letting our good flow forth. My friends, affirm with me, I know the greatest gift in my life is my oneness with spirit. I give thanks every day for all the wonders I experience on my divine path. I'll break it down. I know the greatest gift in my life is my oneness with spirit. I know the greatest gift in my life is my oneness with spirit. I give thanks every day for all the wonders I experience. on my divine path, and so it is. And now please join me in the praise song, Rejoice in the Lord. Please stand. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice. And standing for the prayer of our center. And it's on a flyer in your program and words on screen for those on our live stream. Together, the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living is a sacred field embodying our spiritual community from which the Christ peace, love, and joy emanate to touch, to heal, to bless, 
to prosper and to liberate anyone who comes into contact with it in any way. The light of the Christ illumines us, our center, and our environment. Our spiritual community is filled with and surrounded by the presence of God and is growing from strength to strength. The power of God expands our consciousness of truth guiding us ceaselessly along the paths of wisdom, spiritual growth, unfoldment, and attainment. We are blessed, and to God be the honor and the glory forever. And so it is. Thank you, friends. Please be seated. And now I'll light the candle on behalf of all the youth of the world. And together, let us say the blessing. We love you. We appreciate you. We salute the Christ in you. We see you as shining lights onto your world. God is blessing you now. And so it is. And now we'll sing our temple mission song. Hi. The temple of light, the temple of light. We are a people with a vision, born in spirit, on a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate anyone who comes into contact with us. Anytime, night or day. The temple of light, the temple of light, the temple of light. We are a people with a vision, one in spirit on a mission. To touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and to liberate anyone who comes in. John. Yes, indeed. And now, my friends, I'd like to ask you to join me in some announcements for today, Sunday, December 5, and we'll begin with our welcome. Are there any first-time guests worshiping with us? this first Sunday of December, whether you're in the sanctuary or online, we welcome you to our hearts and our beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living. Any first time guests with us in the sanctuary? No, we're all family. A special welcome home. Home to those people who have not been with us for a while, and that includes being here in the sanctuary. And we trust you will come again and again to share your consciousness with us. Let us just give ourselves a round of applause for being here. <laughs> wisdom Circle. Our Wisdom Circle meets in person on the first and third Sundays at 10 30 a.m. And today, <clears throat> we will be reading Dr. Holmes' thoughts. I'm sorry, this will be for the um, Dr. 
home starts on Finding the Christ. And on December 19th, which is the third Sunday, please join us for Sing the Chorus, when we take a break from reading to singing carols. So stay with us this morning for the first Sunday Wisdom Circle, Finding the Christ, and then come back on third Sunday for Sing the Chorus. Live streaming. We continue to live stream every Sunday at 9 a.m. and on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. The recording is also available later on YouTube. My friends, the schedule of, of temple activity, including our enriching classes conducted by our ministers and post, is posted online and on our Facebook page. To register for classes, kindly visit classes.templeoflightcsl.org, classes where you can also obtain the link. Now, tomorrow, Monday morning, join Reverend John for quiet moments in the gardens at 6 p.m. 6 a oh, yes, please. Thank you for 6 a.m. <laughs> Quiet moments in the garden, indeed. For his refreshing and insightful early morning pickup. And then on Tuesday, come back and join us at 6 p.m. now on Facebook and on our Zoom platform. And this week, our presenter will be, again, Reverend John Scott. The link is sent out on our, to all of you on our mailing list. And if you don't receive the link, please call the office and we'll have it sent to you. Now, our messages every week are edited by Reverend Michael Record. And it's posted on our webpage, templeoflightcsl.org. And we invite you to log in read these shortened versions of talks, and especially if you miss any of our Sunday morning services. Our youth ministry continues with another workshop next Sunday, December 12th. So our parents, please assist us by bringing out your youth to this interesting session. And our friends, I'd also like to share with you another exciting adventure that's coming up, and that is our spiritual prosperity adventure. And guess what? The early bird date for 12 weeks, spiritual prosperity adventure, which begins on January 12, 2022, has been extended to December 15. So sign up now and take advantage of this great deal. So visit our Facebook page for additional information on how you can sign up. My friends, prayer support. We continue to respond with prayer to the challenges of this special time. And a practitioner is available to pray with you immediately following our service every Sunday. On duty today is practice. Carol Campbell, and the number to call is 876-289-0907. You can also speak with a minister from Monday to Friday at 8 a.m. to 12 midnight by calling the same number. And that number again is 876-289-0907. And now friends, I would like to also leave with you a little farewell to one of our long-standing faithful temple members who left us and she recently transitioned. Reverend John Scott will officiate at her service. And here we are talking about Miss Eula Miller. Those of you who are long-standing 
super members will remember Eula. Um, she used to come with her two little nieces. So Reverend John will be officiating at her services for the Thanksgiving on, at Dovecott on December 16 at 11 a.m. for those who can join. And we surround her family with love and prayers at this time. And now, my friends, if you feel moved to support our ministry, kindly visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org, which has our banking details. And thank you for your generosity and for helping us to be a beacon of light in the world. This concludes our announcement. Please join me in the singing of our first hymn, O or Blue Mountain. Words are in your program and on screen. If you're joining us on Love Stream, please stand. <laughs> Thank you, friends. Please be seated. Hmm. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, where we know that we're going to get another awesome, inspiring, and uplifting message. But of course, we'll get an assignment that we will all do faithfully. I'd like to ask you to help me welcome to the podium our pastor, our spiritual leader, our very own Reverend John Scott, the beloved. Reverend John. Thank you, Jen, and good morning, spiritual family. 
all across the globe and those in the sanctuary with us. What a lovely morning it is. What a wonderful, wonderful day. The late Maya Angelou said, and I quote, this is a wonderful day. I have never seen this one before. Can we all say that together? This is a wonderful day. I have never seen this one before. So we're going to make the most of it. You ever wake up in the morning um, with a, a, a melody, a song, in your heart, in your mind, and it, it kind of stays with you all morning and through the day? Sometimes you open Or maybe one line, but it goes over and over and over in your consciousness. Well, a few Christmases ago, Christmas season, I had uh, the blessing of a baby, an infant to do, one Sunday morning. Early in December like this. And I woke up with a carol that I simply Love, just repeating itself. Do you hear what I hear? It's something that it's a carol that I love, and so I came and I did the blessing. And those of you that know me well know that children have a very special place in my heart, uh, and the blessing of children is is for me a transformative event. It, it touches me very deeply. I, I don't know, when you hold an infant in your arms and they look into your eyes, they seem to be looking into your very soul, don't they? They seem to be saying, do you know what I know? Or perhaps in the words of the English romantic poem, poet William Wordsworth, but trailing clouds of glory do they come from God who is their home. Heaven lies about us in our infancy. So this whole thing of anybody who doesn't melt when they hold a child in their arms. And so I did the blessing and all through the ceremony, and again on my way home, in my mind, I'm humming. Do you hear what I hear? Do you know what I know? I get home, and going through my emails, you, would you know it? There is an email from Census of Spiritual Living uh, Minister, uh, Reverend Dr. David Ault, who used to be at the Atlanta Center for Spiritual Living. And in that email, he shares with his, his readers the metaphysical interpretation of what, Carol? Do you hear what I hear? And in his interpretation, he points out that, you know, most of us think of carols as very old melodies, and most of us know them, um, if not all of them, in part. You know, we've been singing them from we were very, very young. We have grown upon them, those of us that grew up in Christian uh, families and Christ Christian communities. And it really is something that we think of as being always there. But there is a carol, and it is, do you, do you hear what I hear, which is only as old as Jamaica is as a nation. It was commissioned in 1962. And here is something else which has potentially earth-shattering implications for, the, had potentially earth-shattering implications for the world. Also in 1962, in October of that year, the Soviet Union and America were involved in a crisis centered on missiles which the Russians had installed in Cuba. So for 13 days during 1962, the world held its breath as the two powers faced off against each other, you know. If you think about Sefe in Jamaica, we say, you know, when you're at school and a bigger boy or a bigger girl than you wants to put fight, and the rest of the children are saying, if you think you're bad, Sefe. So America and Cuba were Sefe 
to each other, which means I dare you. And in the midst of all of that, now just listen to the way the universe works. A French-born writer named Noel Regne and his American-born pianist wife, Gloria Cheyenne, were commissioned by a record producer to write a carol. In the middle of this face-off, the Cuban Missile Crisis, as it was known, Noel Regne and his wife, uh, Gloria, are commissioned to write a carol. But of course, they are reluctant. What is the point? They feel that Christmas has already become too commercialized. Imagine that, too commercialized in 1962, eh? I wonder what they would say about 2021. <laughs> anyway, eh? as we science of mind students know, the universe has exquisite ways of orchestrating life, doesn't it? seems to point us down the pathway that we need. And since we are co-creators with God, we know that we also participate in, in this creation of the path that we need to take for our own growth, our own unfoldment, our own evolution into the greatest us that we can be. And so... This is how the universe works. It is just as mystical as a star shining in the night. We have a songwriter, and of all the names that he would have been christened, it was Noel. Go figure. And guess what? Here's another amazing synchronicity. Himself and his wife have one only girl picnic, and her name is Gabrielle. A child named Gabriel, born to Noel and his wife. And so Reverend Old shares the story that Noel is depressed by the grim faces of people he passes on the street of Manhattan. And I know I know many people who get very down at Christmas. There's, I'm a Christmas person, and so you have one set of people that just love it and do it, all of the trips, and you have some people who feel really out of it and down and gloomy. Well, at this time, during the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, it wasn't a very happy uh, energy surrounding Noel, his wife, and family are uh, where they lived in Manhattan. No one is smiling, and everyone is uptight because joy seems to have faded as people's lives are overshadowed, overshadowed by the mushroom-shaped threat of total annihilation. And they want me to write a carol, he muses. What's the use? We may all be dead tomorrow. And then something as miraculous as the energy that arose that first Christmas takes hold of Noel Regney. He's walking down the streets in Manhattan, and he passes two mothers pushing babies in their strollers. And you know? There is nothing to soften your heart like a baby. It's just amazing. And I used to, when I first went to England, I used to be very amused. I went at around about this time of year too, because the mothers would leave the prams outside the meat shop with the baby all covered up and snugly the little faces, you know, all snug, and going and going to the meat shop with the little dog in their arms. 
And I used to say, look at that now. But when Noel Regne saw these two infants in their mother's care, an inspiration came upon him. And musicians and songwriters and composers have said to me that sometimes the whole thing comes full orbed into their consciousness. It's like they get it. And this entire beautiful song, which I'm sure you know, this simple melody, this beautiful song, comes full orbed into his consciousness. And it begins with the night wind. You know, this time of year, we in Jamaica say Christmas breeze a blow. And we just sang, O'er oh, our blue mountain descends this bright angel song. There is this kind of energy shift at this time of year. And o'er the blue mountain, and o'er the streets of Manhattan, and o'er all of mankind, there comes this shift in energy. And the night wind asks the little lamb, do you see what I see? I just think this is a very important and moving aspect of this song. Because, you know, all of nature seems to know long ahead of us, humans in our arrogance, when something momentous is about to happen. And so the night wind says to this symbol of purity, a lamb. Do you see what I see? As David Ault puts it in that quote, it's kind of like a leg bones attached, attached to the knee bone sort of song, unquote. So it starts with the most fundamental and pure aspect of life, nature in all its purity, talking to a little lamb, which is a universal symbol of goodness and love and joy. So you know, my friends, nature isn't concerned about missile crises or any other crises, either international or personal. So I have a friend who had located from America back to Jamaica, to relocated. And one half of him, his heart was happy to be home, but he was trying to open a bank account, and he had the biggest hassle to do so. And so we sat in our garden, and halfway through a bottle of Merlot, he was still moaning how hard it is to come a yard. And as we sat in my garden, the same garden that I do quiet moments in in the morning, this was in the late evening, and the, there was this cool breeze wafting over our blue mountain, the neighbor's cat, an ordinary common or garden puss, meandered disdainfully past us through my ferns and my, and my flowers. And I just thought, myself, look at that. Nature is not concerned with the minutiae and the nenge nenge, as we say, that we do to ourselves, particularly at this time of year. You know, we, there's so much to do. There are cakes to bake, and there is shopping to be done, and there are presents to be bought. And what are we doing about the house? And, you know, from when I ask you to hang on back the kitchen door that I hang off upon one hinge, all of that um, we are saying to our partners and our loved ones. We're in this frenzy while the breeze blows over our blue mountain. And nature prepares for something so glorious, so beautiful, so tender, that if we could only but just pause for a minute to see, as the wind says, the night lamb to the night lamb, do you see what I see? Do you see? the star of astral wisdom that is leading us to the discovery of the Christ in our neighbors, in our friends, in people of 
different languages and different cultures and different behavior. Do you see that star of wisdom and spiritual perception and spiritual discernment that is urging us to look for the goodness in all of life? And so the night wind says to this little creature, do you see what I see? Wow, I wonder if, we, if, if, if the, the night wind asked us what our response would be. Do you see goodness or do you see ugliness? Do you see beauty? Do you see kindness? Do you see joy? And do you see how that star illumines the darkness of human ignorance and superstition and how it dances above the earthly frustrations with a tail as big as a kite? And this is a little message for our young people in our Temple of Life Center for Spiritual Living community. And I know that this doesn't happen anymore to any great extent, but I'll share an experience I had when I was 15. My favorite uncle made my brother, Dennis, who is four years older than I, and myself, kites for Christmas. Mine was particularly beautiful. He used the, the rib from the palm, from the, the, the fronts of the coconut palm to make the frame, and mine was covered in red, green, and gold tissue paper. It was beautiful. And for the tail, he cut up a, 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 one or two of his ties. And my mother, when she saw it, said, but Larry, that is the tie I gave you last Christmas. And he said, it's going flying today. And so he took us to what was known as Race Course in Kingston. It's now got a, a very stush name, National Heroes Park. But it was Race Course, covered in, in buttercups and wide open spaces. And people used to go down there and fly kites. And we had a glorious afternoon of flying kites. And then we came home and we had dinner and my brother, who remember he's 19 and I'm 15, is going out to a party, to which I wasn't invited, of course. And I murmured and groaned and, and quarreled to myself mostly, but, but audibly enough to be heard by my parents, why it is I was so restricted. Not fair, I'm only, I'm only four years younger than Dennis, and there's no reason why I can't go out and party as well. And so my father, who was kind of uh, a homegrown philosopher, came into my bedroom at bedtime and said, I have a story to tell you, and I thought, oh, God, no. And he said, oh, it's okay, we were flying kites today, and this is a story about a kite in China. Now, one never knew with my dad whether he just made it up on the spur of the moment to, give, to teach you a lesson, or whether it actually was a story. So some may get it, some may get According to the story, there was this beautiful kite. It was larger and more beautiful than any of the other kites that were flown uh, in the kite competitions of its time. And it not only flew faster, it flew higher. But in spite of its, its greatness and its celebrity, it just wasn't satisfied. When it reached the end of the string, it could still look up and see the clouds wafting over the mountains and the birds at play among the clouds, and it wanted to go higher. But darn it, the string. The string prevented it from going as high as it thought it should and could go, and it complained bitterly about the string that restrained it. It 
explained every time the kite w went out for a flight about the string, and this string got fed up. But you know, when you just get tired of being blamed, you mothers, know, and I think, would relate to this. No matter what you do, there is always something more to be done and another complaint about what hasn't happened. And so one afternoon, as the kite was flying, a gale blew up. It was very strong. And normally, the string would hold on for dear life and keep the kite safe. And this day, the kite just let go. So my dad said to me, and what do you think happened? And I said, well, the kite soared up into the clouds to fly in the heavens and to, to play with the birds. And my father said, wrong. It's the tension created by the string that creates the dynamic which allows the cat to fly. And so when the string broke, contrary to what I thought and the, the, the kite had anticipated, it very quickly crashed to the ground, breaking a rib. Hmm. There's a moral to this story. You know, my friends, sometimes when we we struggle against what we think are the restrictions. We need to remember that sometimes we ourselves have created that tension in order for us to learn a lesson that is important for our growth so that we can soar to our spiritual magnificence. So, the kite wanted one of those no-strings-attached relationships. You know those? Mm -hmm. But sometimes there are strings necessarily attached which we need for our own growth so that we too can soar. And it's the things that you think are holding you back that, that may actually be responsible for your growth. Just remember that. And so back to the story of this wonderful carol, Do You Hear What I Hear? The mystery of that first Christmas begins with something as elemental as a cool breeze wafting o'er our blue mountain, the kind of breeze that is perfect for kite flying. And as those gentle breezes blow, nature asks the purity of the animal kingdom to see what we so often miss because we are caught up with the struggle against what we think is restraining us, what is holding us back, when really what we are struggling again against is grooming us for greatness and for goodness and for recognizing and attaining and achieving our worth. So the communication, my friends, moves up the next rung of the upward spiraling ladder of life to a creature the little lamb trusted to nurture and look after it. And the little lamb says to a shepherd boy, or it could be a girl because we believe in gender equality, The little, the, the little lamb asks the shepherd boy, do you hear what I hear? Shh, listen. Do you hear? Can you hear above the clamor of daily life, the din of making life work, the honking of taxi drivers, the roar of motorbikes, 
the blare of sound systems. Can you hear this voice? The voice of the infinite invisible, the voice of the almighty I am, saying, I created you to complete me. God said, I wouldn't be complete without each one of you. You come to make me experience life at your level and in your beauty and in your truth. What a glorious, glorious, glorious thought for us to have this Christmas time. Do you hear what I hear? Can you hear above the, the clamor of life the truth of your own Christhood, the universal vibration of divine love that will heal everything in your life, everything in the world? Do you hear, echoed what Jesus the beautiful said, love one another, love one another, don't just love one, honor one another as I have loved you. And so the first two questions, my friend, are can you see beyond your human limitations and can you hear the truth in your heart? A truth so life transforming that it has a voice as big as the sea. Listen, my friends, you have to listen amid the clamor. The song of creation, the song high above the trees with a voice as big as the sea. So as we say in Jamaica, big things are gone. Our shepherd boy or girl needs to share his or her conviction about something that is momentous, something that is life altering, something that is really important. And so he goes directly to the top. He doesn't bother to waste time sharing with his parents or his teacher or some other adult. You know why? Too often, we don't take the time to listen to our young people. Or if, if we do, we pour cold water on their ideas. Mm -hmm, I hear you. But what? You, you think I'm made of money? You know, say, say, I open a bank account. You don't tell the bank how much you're up on my head. And you want to start a business at this time, and you're only 15. What kind of business can a 15-year-old run? We do it. So he doesn't bother to go where he knows his ideas and this amazing discovery. You know, last Sunday, Carol Campbell shared a reenactment and a Jamaicanization of that wonderful miracle of the feeding of the 5,000. And you know, that little boy was saying to his mother, Mama, I was on my way home and I meet this amazing person that, that gave me the truth. And she said, well, the, the, the fish and the bread, the sugar bowl, me send you for a boy. We do it, eh? So our simple shepherd, custodian of innocence and grace, goes where? To the top of the ladder, the mighty king. And that, my friend, is where we have to go when we have something in our heart so big, when we have a dream that is so incredible. Don't bother tell it to somebody who's going to say to you, what? No, sir. Go to the top, to the king that indwells you and me and all creation, the head of the stream. And the shepherd boy says to the mighty king, do you know what I? I'm only 15, but you know what I know? Hmm. A child, a little picnic, is shivering in the cold. And what he's saying across the centuries to you and I is do you know as you sit in your gated community, in your apartment with your friends, comfortable and warm, that there are homeless people in the streets? There are children and women and 
people who are being abused and who are lonely? Do you know what I know? That an ounce of love from you, an ounce of compassion, would be silver and gold to those people whom society has perhaps. ignored or forgotten. Do you know what I know? That each child comes trailing clouds of glory from God, which is our home, and that heaven lies about us. If we can do what the mighty Jesus said, repent, which means turn around turn full circle and become as little children if you want to experience the kingdom which I have renamed the kingdom of heaven. Let us offer our inner child, the Christ child within us, the silver and gold of our devotion this Christmas. So as Reverend David Ault puts it, and I quote, we do not have the luxury of even one negative thought. We can't afford to hang on to the negatives, for when we do, we are preventing ourselves from accessing the truth, unquote. And so our innocent, pure child self is saying to the mighty king part of us, the higher self of ourselves, we have to humble ourselves and become like little children. In other words, we have to turn back and seek the purity of the Christ child that is within us. And boy, must have said something that touched that mighty ego self of the great king. Because the king is so moved by what the child says that he decrees to the people everywhere, listen to what I say. Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, Do you see what I see? A star, a star, dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy. Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song. High above the trees with the voice as big as the sea, with a voice as big as the sea. Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, Do you know what I know? In your palace, war, mighty king. Do you know what I know? A child, a child, shivers in the cold. Let us bring him. 
to silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Said the king to the people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace, people everywhere. Listen to what I say. Whoa, the child, the child, sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and And Avel, with your voice, it's as big as the sea. That beautiful voice this morning has brought us goodness and delight. Wow, my friends. I believe it is that childlike purity that convinces the powerful side of us that we are indeed beloved of God, that we are heirs with Christ to that kingdom, the family dome of heaven that we share right here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, and that we have come to earth like that little Christ baby, to share with all humankind. You know, our everyday Christmas luncheon last Friday was not only food for the body, it was food for the soul. And it came beautifully packaged with an affirmation card created by one of our shepherd boys, 13-year-old Ibo Dehaney. And I have to share it with you. It's a little green card, green and red, created by Ebo. And on it is the following affirmation. Christ is born anew in me every day. Can we say that together? Christ is born anew in me every day. I live peacefully, joyfully, and lovingly. Together, I live peacefully, joyfully and lovingly. Every day is Christmas to me. Every day are Christmas to me. Let us say it in Jamaican. Every day are Christmas to me. Every day are Christmas to me. For real. And so my friends, thank you, Ibo. We do know what you know, and we commit to living it with childlike faith as we go forward into this season of joy and into the new year. Which brings me to your assignment. Everyone who checks out the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living knows I always give an assignment. Your mission 
should you decide to undertake it. It's first of all to make your life a prayer of peace. Christmas. Whatever else you don't get done, whatever else that you have to do that you are worried about and concerned about, make your life a prayer of peace this Christmas by making a conscious effort to speak words of harmony and goodwill to everyone you encounter. And it doesn't have to be audible. Sometimes it can be in the traffic and it is the taxi drivers honking behind you when the light hasn't really quite turned to green. It can be your neighbor whose music is too loud or the electric drill is stopping you from listening to your Sunday morning live stream from the temple. And just say in your heart, I behold the Christ in you. That's just, just the most wonderful gift that you can give to anyone is in your heart, just look at them and say, I behold the Christ in you. I see in you that tender, innocent baby, that trailing clouds of glory comes from God because heaven lies about each of us when we seek that little child in the cradle of our hearts in the temple of our lives and bless the world with the gift of our love, our compassion, and our beingness upon the earth. And so, my friends, I behold the Christ in you. Listen to what I say. God loves you, and so do I. Namaste. Reverend John, thank you so much for that. Let us give him another round of applause, really. <laughs> yes, friends, this morning's message truly is one that has given us a lot of food for thought. As Reverend John invited us to, and I'll give you the three takeaways that we got. He says, can you see beyond your limitations? Can you hear the universal Christhood calling to you? And do you know that there are persons around us with whom we can share this gift this Christmas? So my friends, let us offer the Christ child within that will bring us goodness and light and make sure that you make your life a prayer of peace this Christmas. Speak words of harmony and goodwill to every person you meet as we behold the Christ in you and in them. Namaste. I know it's the first Sunday in December, so you know it's a very special treat. So all those who are born in December, Skip around. No, I'll invite Reverend John to come and do the birthday blessing. Reverend John. And those at home, please stand as well and put your hand on your heart as we sing the birthday blessing for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear loved ones. Happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. 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 Happy birthday to you. And I got something interesting on WhatsApp yesterday. It says if you add your age with your year of birth you get 2021 
at your age to your month of birth and you get 2021. So we go to the, the source. The source of which that little lamb and that mighty voice and that king decreed for all humanity. And so we say to the universe, listen to what we say. There is among us Standing with us today, those that you sent to make this a world that works for all. And as they celebrate their birthdays in the month of December, we know for them that from the center of their being to the circumference of their conscious awareness, they live, move, and manifest their lives in a victorious state of fulfillment to the honor and glory of God. And so we know that this world would not be the same if they were not on the planet sharing the silver and gold of their consciousness and their presence with humanity. And so we just bless them. We give thanks that we have chosen to walk this path of truth together. And we hold hands as we walk together through eternity, singing. Carols of love and of praise and of thanksgiving that they are and we are and we all are prospering and thriving and living the liberty of the Christ to the honor and glory of God. I give thanks that this is so. And so, and so it is. And in that consciousness, would you stand for us uh, to say the prayer of Jamaica? Together, the radiant light of God's love is now flowing through us and from us to everything and everyone it touches. The eternal light of God's love now completely fills, covers, and surrounds our island Jamaica. The glowing intensity of the light of God's love now interpenetrates and awakens within the hearts and minds of our countrymen and women the, the truths of, of life which set free. free. The, the light of God's love is growing and glowing in intensity in the hearts and minds of mankind everywhere. Love, help, harmony, goodwill, peace, uprightness, integrity, joy, prosperity, kindness and our, and our oneness, oneness under, under God, God are now, now established, established and, and so, so it is. is and remains standing for our second um, song and it is written to the tune of Deo made so popular by Harry Belafonte many years ago and it was the, the words are by our very own Michael Elliott. Michael, where are you? He's actually in the audience today. Let us give him a word of a round of applause. De, de oh, me say de oh. Gloria in excelsis de oh. Deo, me say Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Come to find Gloria in excelsis Deo. Lord, what I like, the angel, I heap of them. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Deo, Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Deo, Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Me watch all night and me hear a song. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Look like right white conqueror. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Deo, Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. 
Chelsea's day, 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 glory in Chelsea's day. Come, we go and look. Looking at the manger, glory in Chelsea's day. Bow down at the tear and welcome the train. Glory in Excelsis Deo, 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 Gloria in Excelsis Deo, 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 Gloria in Excelsis Deo, we see the boy and me know say a king, Gloria in Excelsis Deo, feel the peace and I feel the sing. Gloria in excelsis Deo, 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 Gloria in excelsis Deo, 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 Gloria in excelsis Deo, De, mi se 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 de, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Wow. Yes, make a quick clap. <laughs> then would you take your love offering in your hand, and if you're at home about to press that donate button, just put your hand on your heart to bless the offering that we bring to life and to this temple of light. As we say together, lovingly I give, joyfully I receive. Be thou fruitful, increase and multiply. Bless, prosper and enrich everyone whom you touch and replenish all of my financial affairs. So be it. Thank you, Father. And so it is. And so we bless each other. We bless the gifts, the gold and silver of consciousness that ennobles and enriches and takes this teaching to the farthest corners of creation with a voice as big as the sea. As we follow that astral star of wisdom to the place right over the temple of our lives, where in the manger of our hearts is born anew the glory of the Christ, the cosmic Christ, full of grace and truth. We bless the talent, we bless the love, we bless the money, we bless the beingness, we bless the allness, we bless our land and all lands. We bless all of creation. And know that this is the time when God kind is established on earth and the world works for all to the honor and glory of God. I truly give thanks that this is so. And, and so, so it, it is. is. And as the wind blows over our blue mountain, let us sing together, yes, there is peace on earth. Yes, there is peace on earth, and yes, it begins with me. Yes, there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. This is the moment now 
with every step I take. Yes, this is my joyous vow. My vow to take each moment and live each moment in a peace eternally. Join me tomorrow morning in the garden for 10 minutes, a quiet moment. And then on Tuesday evening, I will be with you. And the topic is Wahan Kya Club. And then on Thursday evening, there is prayer power and a 45 minutes to an hour of stillness. That stillness that the, what the night wind spoke of to the little lamb. And then on Sunday again we meet to glorify God and to prepare to receive the beauty of Christ in the place truth. God loves you, and so do I. Now let's see. And yes, it may.